Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to Harry Dandy Vinland Saga. Um, tonight on season two, episode uh, ten. So, woo, what happened last time? Um, it's been a minute because I went on a trip, but I'm back and I'm ready. We left off on quite pe possibly the best two episodes of the entire show up to this point, and I do not say that lightly, okay? Because there have been a lot of like pretty pretty fire episodes, but I mean, does anything compare to Thorfinn crawling out of? the own bloodshed filled pits of his mind i don't think so i really don't think so um but yeah so already let me just boom get the um the last episode on the screen i'm gonna just do a little bit of a scroll through maybe a little bit of yapping just to kind of remember what's going on and then um we're gonna just jump into episode 10 it should be very exciting it's cra it is kind of crazy because it's like we're finally I'm pulling my notes up. I always forget to pull my notes up, man. We're finally, um, like the, the Thor's ideology, right? Way back from the beginning of episode one has now been like reborn in Thorfinn. Like he's, he's ready to go down that path, right? Like he's had it in his mind. Um, maybe you could even say very deep in his mind, like kind of a subconscious thing, you deep in those memories. But now it's like, he's actually using that as the path for his, he called it like rebirth and atonement, I believe. Um, which is just fire already, right? That kind of stuff. Um, point being, though, that, like, that philosophy, the Thor's philosophy, we're actually gonna be able to, like, see in action, which I'm very excited about, because, I mean, it's episode, we're going into episode 10, there's, like, 20-something, right? Um, and we haven't really gotten to see much of that in action other than really, like, Thor's saving the slave in episode, I think, one, and then Thor's doing like, Oskolod, right? The whole, like, Oskolod thing as a whole, which was, like, first three episodes, and then it just has been, like, the big gap, right? And we've, it's, it's actually kind of crazy, like, structurally, right? Where we're introduced to a philosophy, and we see it at work, and it's portrayed as a very, like, beautiful thing, right? I mean, think, like, the slave getting warmed up, and we see them, like, in the Vinland kind of mental place, um, as they die peacefully, but it's like, it's very like sweet and beautiful. Um, we're like seeing these visions and how much it like means to the guy. Um, even if it's perhaps a little like, doesn't make sense. Cause I remember the rest of the Thorfinn family was like, Hey, what are you doing? Or at least the sister was, um, to Thor's right. But like ever since then, we, we like have lost that once Thor's died and then just dived into like the polar opposite, you know, where Thorfinn, the one who was supposed to carry the torch it began to do the opposite and went full bloodshed um and we we followed that line right so it's it's funny like we're introduced to something beautiful and then we get like the polar opposite to like give the context to like give the perspective of it give it something to be relative to and now we're pulled back into it right um and what a beautiful way to be pulled back into it man yeah the last two episodes were so good just just remembering um no <laughs> Uh, yeah, so in the real world, um, the crops, the grain, the wheat that Einar and Thorfinn have been planting after, you know, they've gotten all the trees dealt with, and they had, um, what's the dude's name? Forget Sverkel. Sverkel was loaning them a lot of stuff to be able to, to, like, work on their field. That was completely ransacked by some of the retainers, I think it's called. They're, like, slave people that, like, control them. Um, and that has obviously set Einar off, because you know he, he has a, you know, a little bit of a shorter fuse. I don't blame the guy, considering how bad his life's gotten. Um, but interestingly enough, and, and as, it, as it matters to Thorfinn, that is what caused Thorfinn to, in a moment of, like, righteous anger, or probably righteous feeling anger, or maybe just rage, if we want to be real, punch the guy in the, in the face, right, and, like, break all of it, to which Einar was like, hey, good job. Um... But that, that key of, like, Thorfinn was angry, like, the emotion backed behind violence, I think that's really kind of the a large part of the Thor's philosophy, where it's like, and I might have talked about this last time, but just to reiterate, like, I have no enemies, right? That's, like, a, that's kind of, like, a big phrase. But I think that's less of, I have no people that I want to hurt, or not even that, it's less of, there's, I'm gonna hurt nobody, like, no nobody's worthy of being hurt, but, and it's more of, there's nobody whom I consider as my enemy, in which case I feel like I want, like I need to hurt them. But it's, you know, it's like different. Or, you know what I mean? Um, where you take the emotion out of the violence, it's more like I hurt people because it's necessary for 
something that needs to happen, like to protect myself, to protect the things I care about. Um, not I hurt people because I'm mad at them and I want to see them in pain, right? For what they've done or etc. Et right? Etc. Etc. Um, and I think that's like where we're at with Thorfinn, right? Uh, I mean, and then also, of course, tying all the Oskolod, like fight the true battle stuff, which shout out Oskolod for you, going off on a high note, especially dream world Oskolod. Man, it feels good to see him again. It feels good to see him again. It's crazy because we just, uh, so many of the characters, like Thorfinn's like one of the only characters that's like followed with us. Because I mean, like Knut's still around, but most of the time it's just been Thorfinn doing Thorfinn things um, with Einar, right? So it's it's just nice to see those friendly faces again. Also the animation, I just got to rewatch this real quick. Dude, the black, white, and red... is crazy it's crazy man and when he fell for the first time the animation when he was falling was also some of the most insane stuff i've ever seen like pov you're tumbling into hell oh it's horrible it's horrible <laughs> oh man um and yeah how they used younger thorfinn right whenever it like would cut to him here, like the younger teenage Thorfinn, and then Thor's talking to him, and he becomes like six or five year old Thorfinn again. It's just too good, man. Like what? What a way to depict it all. Um. Yeah, I'm such a hoe for it. Uh, so I guess the I think I recall from the preview we're going into like a Canute thing again. Man, what an interesting I, like the the Thorfinn Canute parallels are crazy too, considering that, like. Canute is now doing a lot of bloodshed that's necessary for his, for, you know, his king status or, you know, what he's pursuing. Um, whereas Thorfinn's kind of, like, now reconciling all the bloodshed he did. Like, I mean, it's almost like a reverse, like, uh, like they uh, mirror each other, but, like, as opposites. But I don't know. That, that's, well, I want to see more Canute. I think we're going to get more Canute, so I'm going to hold off on some of that until we get some, a little bit more Canute, because I think Canute's coming up. Um, in a second here. And, like, Thor Kell as well, I think, is still... I don't know. Well, uh, I don't remember the preview exactly. I'm not gonna rewatch the preview right now, because I don't think I need to. Um, but, yeah. Uh, I did also mention a little bit last time I remember, like, Thorfinn, I think, could be an interesting parallel to, um, like, Keytail, right? Because we've got, you know, Iron Fist Keytail going around. Keytail's son, scary son Thorgil has show showed up. So, I mean... The people that Thorfinn, like, the people similar to the people of Thorfinn's past, right? Like, the Oskolod gang, aka Thorgil, has showed up. So, that's going to be a very easy way to, like, show Thorfinn's change and, like, how Thorfinn interacts with these people in the next few episodes. Um, but honestly, I kind of want to just start the episode, episode 11, I think. No, episode 10. Um, so, I think we should just do that. So, let's just have a drink. Get yourself a snack. I got a little Dr. Pepper here. Let me take a sip. You can see this one is freshly uncorked. Should be very, very exciting. Um, Thorfinn, you're my boy. Okay. I also, one of my favorite parts of last episode, I, I'm just going to say real quick, the part where uh, where uh, Thorfinn like tells Einar what he's thinking of like, I'm going to be reborn and start atoning for what I did. Also really cool. Like I really like how Thorfinn's like crying there. It's like the, the emotional weight of it's all coming out, right? That big catharsis. And then Einar's like, I don't know what you're talking about, but I hear you and I'm here for you. Like, you know what, Einar? You don't need to be smart. You just need to be on my side, you know? You don't need to be following these crazy inner battles. But as long as you're with me, like that's what matters. That's my boy. That's my boy right there. So yeah, episode 10. <sighs> <clears throat> That also, ooh, maybe we'll get some cool Einar Thorfinn conflict. That's like Einar still kind of hot headed. Thorfinn's, you know, doing his thing. Thorfinn kind of now has like the now that he's reached his own like crest um, within the his his inner battle, right? That he'll be able to share some of that to Einar as Einar still has a lot of the issues from you know his sister dying, um, his mom dying, his dad dying, everyone dying, being captured. Like Einar has a lot of that rage still. So Thorfinn has like. That can be some nice, you know, seeing how those forces interact. Um, yeah, that should be exciting. But yeah, episode 10. Let's just see where, let's see where they're going, and then we can follow them there. That's what's important, all right? Let the story be told to us. Episode 10, let's get going in. A three, a two, a one. Bang! 
What a classic opening, by the way. Every time. The motorcycles, man. The map of motorcyclists, man. Write it down. Write it down. Man, I kind of want to read some of the manga, too. Just to see how the manga, like, paneled all of this. Especially, like, Thorfinn falling into the pit. I bet that, m like, manga sequence was crazy. Dang, and I forgot about, um, Arnhide. Yeah. Ooh. She's gonna be a big part of the drama moving forward. Because, like, we, we have a connection to her. Einar has a connection to her. She has a connection to Keytail. And Keytail is the head of everything, you know? So, that's gonna be an issue. That's, I mean, it's gonna be an issue. Oh, and the blood forming the crown. Man, it's like, like, Canoe having the scar, I feel like that makes him an even better leader, almost. Like, like, I remember them saying, like, how dare you damage his majesty's face or whatever, right? Because he has a noble face, so it is, like, quite the travesty to damage that permanently. Um, but in terms of, like, someone that's heading a lot of, like, military expedition, to show that he has been, like, wounded, I feel like that makes him scarier, right? That makes him, like, cooler. Like, pretty boy... Prince shows up versus pretty boy Prince who's been marked. Like, that's the weight of that. The cursed head. Oh, it's beautiful. Also, the piano tracks, bro. I love the music in this show so much. Dang, Thorfinn. Not a Canute episode. I, I, I was wrong. Maybe it'll cut to it. We'll see. I like the the ponytail, man. Dude, these are some buff men. I mean, even Einar is packing massive pecs. Okay, let's calm down. Go team, go squad. Bro, that shoulder scar is so gnarly. Oof. I was just about to ask how long. Man, it was nice to see Thorfinn smile like that when they were knocked that tree down. Oh, dang. Remember, uh, Arnheim doesn't have an, an offer like that. Wonder if he's gonna try to buy her. That'd be an interesting development. Yep. It's a shame because Kito is like really attached to her in what we've seen. So it would be really hard to. Thorfinn knows. Thorfinn knows. Ooh. 
Wow. Clear skies, a little bit of cloud coverage. It's looking good. Oh. Dang that hand animation. Wow. The plan to atone, right? Dang. Is that Omar back there? He got his hair grown out a bit. Mmm. Mm, okay, dude. Ooh, a little discount. Don't mind if I do. Wow. We're speedrunning. <laughs> yeah <laughs> NR, why you look like that bro oh where are you going oh please don't die while you're gone please don't die and have like the slaves get you know like uh will and testamented over to somebody worse Jump off Sverko? Oh boy. What is that belt, bro? And you are not pulling off the tiny stash. Oh no, I swear if Kito dies. Because Verkel's talked about, like, he, he's a fool for trying to pay his way for away from combat with Harald, right? So, we'll see. It's a shame, because I do kind of like Kito, you know? Like, he's treating Einar, Einar, or whatever, in Thorfinn so well. But, I mean, this isn't a world that, like, being kind will get you super far. Whoa. Dude, what? He has also set eternity in their heart without the possibility that mankind will find out the work which God has done from the beginning even to the end. Ecclesiastes 3 and 9 to 11? Bro, they just had us with straight up... What is that, biblical scripture? Oh, shit. This is current time, right? Probably Canute doing something crazy. Who are you? You are big snoozing. Hey, wake up! <laughs> wake up! Is that Canute? Or is that Harald? Oh, it's this guy. Okay. I forget this guy. Yeah, this guy. Yep. Yep. Dang, Canute got such a long beard! Good morning, Canute. 
Damn. Why are you looking at me like that, bro? You looking at me all like, you know what I'm saying? Okay, Kadu. Okay. Wow. Was it? Was that him dreaming about scripture? Was that almost like a like? I feel like that's kind of how you could interpret that, right? Because it was so smoky, and then it cut to him asleep. That he's like brewing over it in his mind as he's sleeping. I'm gonna have to reread that too. What a crazy lines. King can Oh look at these children playing games. <laughs> Dang. I love his I love his headband. Yeah, this dude. I this dude. Is it Gunnar? Back home. Gotcha, gotcha. Dang, that guy's scarred up. Wolf. My brother. That's important. Yep. Wow. Oh wow, he called in uh he called in Keto though, or Keto's going in. Interesting. I don't know if Keto's gonna be coming back. <laughs> One of the kids fell. <laughs> How, how were you good at it, Kadu? Oh, wow. Aww. Dude, look how armored up Canute is, bro, to play outside. That's so goofy. Really? That's interesting. Let him pick himself up, Ragnar. Yep. Bro, he does not need that much armor to be playing ball. Facts. <laughs> Freaking Ragnar. Rest in peace, by the way. Aww. Baby Kadu, man. That's crazy, because it was fatal for Ragnar. For him to say letting your letting your guard down can prove fatal. Well, I don't know if his guard was let down. He was straight up, like, spear-stabbed from hiding. So, like, I don't know if that even counts. If I remember correctly. Don't go in the water. Oh, no. Canoe? They passed it to you, bro. You're, you're tripping, man. Whoa. Whoa. Was that... I'll have to look again. It looked kind of like um, Ragnar. Okay. Thank you for breaking it down, bro. Thank you for breaking down the politics. I appreciate that. I appreciate that so much, show. You have no idea how much I appreciate that.
So, okay, gotcha. Thank you. So they're actually chillin'. Okay, cool. However, that's important. Okay, no, we already, yeah, we know this. Thank you. Is Canute gonna be able to, like, also take on Harald's territory? Yeah, I was about to ask if he has an heir. Aw, Canute's sister. Estrid. I'll write Estrid's name down. Oh, dang. Yeah, he can't speak, right? He's be he's completely, yeah. No, nope, he's got a little bit of strength. Okay. Wow, he named him as the heir. In front of a crowd, too. Yeah, that confirms it. Dang. Yeah, I was about to say, I gotta go back to the last episode. Didn't... He was making some cra... Canute was making moves. The last Canute episode, I mean. Yeah, I was about to say! Okay, I was about to say... Wait a second. Didn't he... Didn't he do something like this? Isn't this actually, like, Canute making crazy moves? Okay. That's why it was his head that rolled up, because he feels the guilt. Yeah. Oh, Canute, you little slithery rat. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. I cuz I th I was I was thinking like I kind of thought they were more opposed, you know? I was like why why did I think that? It's cuz Canute was trying to make moves. So I thought there was opposition, there really wasn't opposition, which makes Canute look kind of, you know. Dang. Makes Canute look bad, you know? Bro. Canoe was acting so nice, he had me he had me on it tricked, you know? That's crazy. The curse of the crown. Wow, look at that. Wow, I can't believe they're on such good terms. That's the craziest development to me. Dang, Canute, the curse of the crown. Oh, I'm rewatching episode like five so fast right after this. Okay. You're way more dastardly than I thought, bro. Are you gonna trust it? Imagine he doesn't even trust the drink. That'd be crazy. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's a... It's literally his sister, and he's stressing. Yeah. Not trying to get poisoned. Exactly. That's crazy. The head of his brother. Or is it the king? Or is it the king? Because he did see the king. Yeah, he did. The king got decapitated. So it makes sense that he's rolling up as a decapitated head. Wow. Oh! She had a dodge. Dang. <laughs> Necessary evil, or so you say. Dang. They're like both, Canute and Thorfinn are both following their their dad's legacy, their father's legacy. It's just one was King Sven, or Sven, and the other was Thor's, right? But they're both, in a way, following the legacy. Or at least that's what Canute maybe even fears. But, you know, that's crazy. Nah, he accepts it. Two cursed men. Damn. Wow. Bro, you suck. Oh, the king. One more bat on the way? No? Wow. I love Harald, bro. You can't believe Canute poisoned him. And then showed up like everything was normal. Okay, Ragnar. <laughs> Gillen Bursty of the Lake. Gullen. Gullen Bursty of the Lake. Dang, that's where it happened. This is nothing. Yeah, that was the, that was the end of an episode of I've ever seen one. Holy crap! Canute's shaping up a lot scarier than I was expecting. Canute's a kind of going menace, man. Bro, is Canute gonna be the cause of like war hitting hitting Kitel's farm? Cause cause Harald is dying cause cause he poisoned him. And now Kito's gonna show up. Our plot threads are gonna start con co to connect. Thorfinn's on his, like, you know, let's end war arc. Atonement arc, farming arc. And then one boy Canute's on this, like, cursed king arc. And they're gonna, they're gonna, is, how much of a clash is there gonna be, man? Are we gonna see, like, an awakened Thorfinn, you know, opposed to this awakened Canute? That'd be so sick. 
it really depends how how bad this curse gets for Canute, right? Curse, of course, being like a metaphor, because he's not like literally cursed. It's well, it's you know the figure figurative curse of being the king. But man, bro, bro, he showed up so nice. I was like, who's the head just rolled up, bro? No, it's it's this King Sv King Swen, bro. Forgot what the man looked like. He had such a he, he literally had like an episode and then got decapitated. Poor guy. That's called the Oscalad treatment. That was crazy. Okay, let me I want to let me go back. To, I think it was episode 5, was it? Yeah, when did you say you were going to poison this guy? I could have sworn like at the end did you say that? Yeah, he was he was talking about okay. Because I remember he was doing all the warmongering, but I, I remember the burning more than I remembered anything else. Oh, he's pogging. He's, he's pogging at all the money. Um. But yeah. Is it in here? In this ending treatment? Yeah, he's just poisoning everyone that he needs to. See, man, I was kind of thinking like, oh, if he's making all these moves, I was like, I was more sympathetic towards Canute. I thought like, oh, him and Harald are having a dispute. Like it's, I thought it was mutual. I thought both wanted each other, but no, Harald's way nicer than I thought. Like I, Canute was, Canute was really the one pushing it, you know? Uh, and he's doing this for his conquering of England, I, I believe, right? Um... But now he once he's got this this all situation in England, then he put, had his eyes on Denmark, right? Did you say you were going for Harald at the end here? Yeah, yeah, for the for the conquering of England. Did you say you poisoned him, or was that new information? They might not have said he would especially explicitly poisoned Harald. If they did or not, I'm not sure. Um. But, yeah, I had forgotten that he was poisoning so many people, and then for it to just move into Harald afterwards, I mean, that just makes sense. That totally makes sense. It was crazy, bro. I was literally, like, <laughs> it felt like an itching in my skull, where the, he was acting so nice, and I was like, hmm, wasn't there supposed to be conflict between these two? Like, is, isn't something happening? And then King Swen's head rolls up and says, I, bro, wait, you forgot? He poisoned these people, you know? Thanks, King Swen. Hey, King Swen, I appreciate the uh, information. I, I appreciate it. Because you, your boy was a little lost, so I appreciate you, you coming in clutch like that. What a good epi- Dude! This show is so good. It's- I feel like it's kind of a sleeper. Is it a sleeper? I feel like nobody talks about this. Maybe I'm just not in the right circles. Um, but man, these last three episodes have just been- Oh, this line. have just been bangers. This- this- I remember they did this in- in- in, in season one as well. It was- man- Low key want to rewatch season one. I feel like I missed a lot of really juicy stuff in season one. That's just the nature of watching shows, sadly. Okay, so this reads: He has. Let me give it. Let me give it its pause it deserves. He has also set eternity in their heart, without the possibility that mankind will find out the work which God has done from the beginning even to the end. He has also set eternity in their heart. Find out the work which God has done from the beginning even to the end. That makes me think, this is, A, this is crazy, right? Because we're getting biblical with it, I, I think, right? Frick, what, let me find the the name. Well, let me talk about this first. And then, because they said, like, the, the chapter is from, so I want to, like, maybe pull that up and see what that's from exactly, right? Pro I think it's just, it sounds like Old Testament stuff to me, but I'm, all, I'm not a biblical historian, so I don't actually know that well. This line, or this part here, um, the quote... Without the possibility that mankind will find out the work which God has done, that makes me think that without the possibility that the people around Canute, the people under Canute, will find out the work which Canute has done, right? Of poisoning all these people, poisoning his brother. It's like, he's he's done all this stuff, setting eternity in their heart, right? I don't know, fulfilling the crown's curse, but without even thinking of... Like the, you know, how, like, I don't know, like the lies to the other people by doing all this, like, poisoning stuff. Who's this poisoner, man? Somebody give this poisoner a raise. He's, the poisoner's gotten three people. Because King Swen got decapitated. He did not get poisoned. But the other two in England and then now Harald. 
you know? <laughs> oh, wait, that's not even the... Okay, so that, this is was the second line. Let me get the first line part of the, the thing here. And let me real quick... Ecclesites? Is, I don't even know how to pronounce that, man. Ecclesites. What is that from? Scripture. Christian Old Testament. One of the Ketuvim of the Hebrew Bible and part of the wisdom literature of the Christian Old Testament. Um, the, what is it? Let's see. Teaches that life is random and uncontrollable. So how do we live under these circumstances? What is the meaning? One who convenes an assembly. That's the name of Ecclesiastes or whatever. Huh. Well, I'm not a freaking the, the freaking Bible theologist, sadly. Let me, let me, I'm going to, I'm going to pull up the three, three, nine through 11. I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. Man is incapable of knowing what God has done in eternity. Or maybe it's even not even about like Canute and him doing these works, but Canute as a pawn in these works that even as like a pawn of God in a sense where it's like, even as he, cause he's, he's religious, right? He's, he's done all the, that was a big part of season one was him like trying to understand love and, and God's love. And I need to, you know, revisit a lot of that cause that was fire. But, um, so maybe even seeing like himself un, un, unaware of like why things are going as they are, like why the curse of the crown has, has dragged him to where he's dragged. Maybe like he feels himself as like a, I was like, not, I don't know, maybe like a puppet or just along for the ride of fate in the sense where he doesn't understand the eternity. He doesn't understand the meaning anymore. I don't know. The first part here is what benefit is there for the worker from that in which he labors? I have seen the task which God has given the sons of mankind with which to occupy themselves. He has made everything appropriate in its time. Bro, this is crazy. He has also said turning their heart without the possibility that mankind will find out the work. So it's, yeah, like, we've been given work from God. Maybe, yeah, we've been, what is it, like, canute has been given work from the crown as, like, a stand-in for God. Um, but he doesn't understand the crown, but he still, uh, like, does the labor of it, even if he doesn't understand. Like, even if there is no benefit for the worker, which is Canute, he still does his labor, which is to follow the crown. That's crazy. I like that. I like that stuff, man. I like it. I like it. Man, Vinland Saga is, like, usually, like, so grounded in a lot of its stuff, and then randomly they'll hit you with, like, a crazy, like, narrator quote or, like, King Swen King Swen's head, like, rolling up. And you'll just absolutely love to see it. Um, so I was looking at episode five. Was there anything else in there I was trying to look at? Um, we're chopping heads. We're making moves. Yeah, there's King Swen. Um, yeah, they had done this previous... Yeah, wow, and we can even see, because this is England here, how little of it Canute has, like, reign of, and so he had to get the rest of this going. I think Mercia was, like, a uh, important... Blah, blah, blah. Um, So that's what he was doing in episode 5, and now episode 10, he's moving into Denmark. I gotcha, I gotcha. Politics, man. And poor Thorkel is literally like, who am I supposed to be killing? You're poisoning all the... You're poisoning all your rivals. There's no war. This is not feed my warrior heart, man. Cause he's not doing he's not doing the bloodshed he's just doing the raising he's doing this like weird smart like like logistical poisoning undercover scary warfare he's doing the scary political moves not just the outright like war political moves it's crazy it's crazy all the while poor Thorfinn is just you know living so humbly but yeah I'm thinking Keitel and Omar I mean they're gonna show up Keitel probably wants to talk about like hey like. I'm giving you money so that I don't have to get attacked, so I don't have, you know, to stay out of combat way, because that's what he's doing with Harald, right? And so is he going to show up, Harald's going to be dead, Canute's going to be in power, and Canute's not going to hear it? Canute's going to be like, nah, man, like, you've got to give me a lot more money or that's not happening, or something, right? Like, I don't know exactly when he's going to show up. Is Harald going to be on his deathbed? Is Canute going to be in control, you know? So I'm thinking, well, probably Canute's going to be in control in some way, right? And so... Keitel will show up, answer to Canute instead of Harald. I'm thinking things are going to fall through for him as maybe some sort of conflict breaks breaks out. 
from any manner of political moves that that could come from. Um, and, uh, man, is Ketel... Because it's weird. We have this promise made. We have this promise made from Ketel to Thorfinn and Einar of when I'm back, plant the seeds, you're free to go. And maybe even work for me as retainers. Like, that's good deal. But it's on the it's contingent on the factor that he comes back, which makes me think he's not going to come back. Or when he comes back, things will be so different that either they won't be, they'll still be slaves or they're, so there's going to be a change, right? You don't get a promise that's that perfect and then have it be answered, you know? Something's going to happen during this trip that's going to make him come back and either he's not going to come back and like only Omar is going to show back up in which the promise is void or he's going to come back and things will be so much worse or so much different that the promise will be adjusted. Or best ending, I feel like that's kind of in the realm of possibility, is like he comes back and things are worse. They're free to go if they wish per his promise. But he's like, yo, maybe you should stick around because things are dangerous and I need your help. I could see that being the case. I don't know. I just, I just feel like something's going to break out. Something horrible is going to start to happen. I mean, there hasn't been... Thor, you know, there was a lot of fighting in the last arc, in the last season, um, and with Thorfinn in this new mode of, like, what violence is, and the purpose of it, and the emotions that should be baked into it, I feel like we need to see it in action, in which case we gotta see, I feel like there's gonna be a fight somewhere that Thorfinn's a part of, right? And maybe I'm just tripping. Who knows? Maybe I'm tripping. Um, yeah. This shot went so hard of, like, dude, this, like, the tree... Was that, was that Canute on the, th that's an, dang, you can see the scar. That's like an old Canute. I, oh, it looks like sweating so much. Wow. Like the Knights of Valhalla flying through the air. The Calvary. The March. It's crazy. Ah, wow. Canute's really slipping. Canute's really slipping. I don't know how we I don't know how you would even bring him back. Cuz he's he's making all these moves and if he's to the point of killing his brother whom he had good relations with, like are he's going to finish he's going to take over Denmark, let's say. Let's say he does that successfully, then what? You're going to wage war on a neighbor? You're going to keep pushing, right? Are you going to try to unite more and more and more, right? Get greedy with it? I could see that being the case. Maybe that'll be the the big co political conflict that then embroils Thorfinn and, and co. Which is kind of fun from like a storytelling angle, right? That is like if there's going to be big political conflict, like a, like two nations fighting doesn't matter unless we know the people in the nations and like like we know people individually and we care about people of which are in the combat, right? Because otherwise it's just two name, big blobs smooshing, but it's like, okay, like if we have, I don't know, Denmark and England go to war, which I don't think is happening because I think Homeboy's Canute has made it, like he fixed it. He, he did the move, Harald's going to die. Maybe Harald somehow lives or the, the, the poisoning gets out to people. Maybe that's what this, this quote, uh, the, the biblical quote is like saying of like, without the possibility that mankind will find out the work. So maybe this is like showing like Canute doesn't realize that his poisoning will be discovered. That could be cool foreshadowing. Um, but like, so let's say something breaks out. It's like, what's so cool is that Ketel, Thorfinn, Einar, Arnhide, Canute, Thorkel, you know, all these characters that we care about care about are in the world or like in the nations or in the territory that will be impacted. So that makes the the fight at large matter. That's why like I, I feel like it's nice that we have like a macro and a micro, you know? We're getting all these big picture moves that Canute's doing, but we also have the micro of like, these are a few slaves in a freaking farm. And we care about the slaves and their little dynamics. So blow like now the big combat, it's like the big combat, yes, is important. But it's making me think not just of what's going to happen to these nations, but what is this going to do to our little microcosm of the world with Thorfinn? So, like, just as kind of a like a, a like um a, a story B story kind of format, I think they parallel pretty well. So, shout out to the story writers for that one. Um, all these shots went so hard of like him putting on the crown, the crown being in blood in in the OP. Canute, Canute, just Canute, bro. He got, he schemed, man, he was scheming. Oscalod and him were scheming. Well, he just picked up from Oscalod, bro. The Oscalod schemes, now it's the Canute schemes. And he's, you know, Ragnar's dead, Oscalod's dead. So there's not much that's 
he's sharing these schemes with. You know, he's kind of lone wolfing a lot of it, which makes it all the much more devious because there's nothing to hold him back, right? If he's sw swinging on his brother like this, like what is there to hold him back if he's this, if he's like this alone? That's crazy. Dang. But yeah, I think that's all I got for this episode, episode 10 of of Inland Saga Season 2. On to the next episode 11 should be exciting. Of course, if you like the video, like the video, subscribe. If you're new, blah, 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 comment, blah, 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 bl